What up, Reader Fam? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. Today, I'm bringing you my favorite books of 2020. The time has come to talk about some of the books that have won over my heart this year, and I am more than ready for it. It is time for a Gush Fest. Gush Fest 2020. The unfortunate thing is that I only have five books on my list this year. Yes, only five. One, two, three, four, five. If I'm being real, this has been one of my worst reading years thus far in my life. Maybe not the worst, maybe that's a bit dramatic, but I've definitely only read books that I've just kind of felt okay about throughout this year. Not a lot of books blew me away, which is okay. Not every reading year is gonna come in and shake you up. Like, sometimes you need those years where it's just kind of like a chill reading year. You just read okay books. That way you can appreciate those years where you really get shook up by books. A book shook. Oh, and also just to clarify, these are just books that I read in 2020. They're not necessarily books that came out in 2020. I feel like people always get mixed up when I do these videos, thinking that I'm talking about new releases that came out this year that I loved. But that's not the case. These are just books that I read this year that that I ended up loving. But anyway, today I'm gonna to be talking about five books that made my 2020 great. So without further ado, let's get started. The first book on my list is Don't Read the Comments. In Don't Read the Comments, we follow two perspectives that surround the gaming world. First up, we have Divya, who is a popular gaming streamer. And then we follow Aaron, who is working to become a video game writer for a local developer. One day, the two cross paths in a game called Reclaim the Sun, and they hit it off, they hit it off, and together they build a pretty strong connection. When Divya begins to be flooded with online harassment. It's taken too far and it thrust her into an invasive situation. And when Aaron is betrayed by a group of people that he's working on a video game with, he begins to struggle continuing to chase the dream that he had before him. This book just came into my life and set a new standard for young adult contemporary books because it's that good. Like my standards were here and now they're here. Like they're up there. It's one of those books that goes deep into each and every character that we come in contact with. Every character plays an important role in the overall story. But I really like when we kind of get to explore the side characters and see more about them because I feel like it really kind of shapes the outskirts of the story and just makes the story more fuller, if that makes any sense. Making weird hand movements. Yeah. The plot does a fantastic job of maintaining the reader's attention span throughout the book. And for me, the reason it was able to do that is because of all the story layers that we have. Like, we have all these layers and it's building up this beautiful book cake that you just can't help but devour. The story tackles the internet and just how harsh people can be on it and just how hard it is to kind of navigate it at times. And how there are people who will always be trying to kind of destroy the things that you are doing. Even if that thing you are doing is not bringing any harm to anyone, whatsoever because people are cruel. It also follows the character's journey in discovering his own dream outside of the dreams that his parents have for him. And we see him as he begins to fight and chase after what he really wants in life. I cannot recommend this book enough. Read it, read it, read it. If you're a contemporary lover, welcome it into your life. If you're a video game lover, let it into your house. Read it, read it, read it. Next on my list, I have Chain of Gold. No surprise there. Pretends to be shocked. How basic can I be? Pretty basic. I'm basic, okay? This is the first book in a new Shadowhunter trilogy called The Last Hours, and we follow our main character Cordelia Carstairs, who was born into a life of fighting demons. When her father is accused of a big crime, her, her brother, and her mother all move to London. And there she ends up being reunited with a bunch of old friends, and we follow her as she begins to be reacquainted and works herself back into that group. But she's not only reunited with friends, she's also reunited with demons. Demon here, demon there, demon over there. And moving to London also paves a new path full of secrets that she must unveil in order to find some truth. I feel like that was a very big description, but you get the gist, hopefully. If not, I'm sorry. I still, after all these years of reading Cassandra Clare's Shadowhunter books, I'm still able to enjoy them. Like, I love them. They're so entertaining. Are they the best books on the market? No, but I still enjoy them. I still love them. They're hecka entertaining. I will say that there are elements that pop up in, like, every Shadowhunter book. Like, all the similarities in her books can sometimes be, you know, questionable, but I'm still able to have a good time devouring all the drama and all the action-packed scenes that occur over the course of the books. For me, this one was definitely most interesting because of all the characters that we encountered. Plot-wise, it was still good, but I was just more so interested in the characters. We have characters from all different walks of life, and seeing them come together and work together with all of their amazing banter is just so much fun. And like I said, it wasn't my favorite plot-wise, but I almost wonder if that's because it is a first book in a trilogy, and so we're kind of still just getting used to the characters and setting up the arc of the trilogy 
trilogy, but there are definitely story threads that were set up in this one that I'm looking forward to seeing be unraveled in the next books. As with every Cassandra Clare book, there's this nice element of mystery, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that begins to unfold throughout the story as a whole. I'm not the greatest detective when it comes to, you know, the mystery plot lines. In fact, I often come up with these, like, really absurd theories that are just so off the page, there's no way they could happen, but I don't know, I have a weird imagination as to where things could go, and it never ends up happening. No surprise there. No surprise. The next book on my list is The Miracles of the Namiya General Store. This book kicks off as we follow these three boys who are on the run from the law after a robbery that they've just committed, and they end up finding themselves in this rundown general store, that being the Namiya General Store. And as they spend their night there, they begin receiving letters, letters from the past. In these letters, the people are asking for advice, so what do the boys do? They give them advice. Together they work to help these people work through the issues that they are facing in their lives. And in doing so, they begin to see how their words affect the future of the people's lives that they're writing to. This was one of the most unexpected favorites of mine. This book came out in 2012, and it was originally written in Japanese and then translated into English. I read it as a part of a Japanese book club that I joined earlier this year, and then, you know, ended up kind of neglecting because I'm bad at committing to things. But if you want to know more about that book club, I will leave a link to it down below in the description. It's still up and running for people who are interested in joining it. I don't run it. Somebody else runs it. I was just participating in it, and then I neglected it. Because I'm the worst. So this is a contemporary based story with a hint of magic. The hint of magic kind of comes through the use of time. That being through the fact that the boys are receiving letters from the past, and they're writing letters to the past. And the senders are sending their letters to the future. Why am I getting confused talking about it? It's not that complicated, Jesse. It really isn't. Even though that's a really small, itty-bitty magical element in the story, it's more so magical to me because of how all the storylines play out. Each storyline, and there are a lot of storylines, end up connecting and weaving together, and it's just beautiful how it's done. Like, it made me emotional. I'm not gonna lie. It made me emo. And this is a book that I would honestly use as a way to, like, showcase the kind of stories that I love. Because it's one of those stories that has basically everything Thing I love in a story wrapped up in it. We have lots and lots of character depth with the senders of the letters. We also have the weaving storylines, which honestly always gets me. We have a hint of magic, and then on top of all of that, we have a solid writing style. This is my kind of book. If you want to get a feel for the kind of books that I love, pick this one up. Also, it takes place in Japan, so there's that. And I'm desperate to find more books like this one. Like, I am on a hunt to find more books similar to this one. I know this will be a story that I treasure for the rest of my life, which saying that sounds so dramatic, I know, and over the top, welcome to my life. Can I get an extra order of cheese with that cheesiness? But I truly love this story and I can't wait to reread it till the end of time. Next on my list, I have You Should See Me in a Crown. In this book, we follow our main character, Liz, who is so done living in a small town, she is ready to get out of there. And the way that she is going to escape is through college. But when a scholarship falls through, she is scrambling to figure out a way to get some cash money in order order to support herself through college. That's when she remembers the winners of Prom Queen and King end up getting a bit of a scholarship, which leads her into a competition for the crown. The best word that I can use to describe this book is wholesome. It brought the biggest smile to my face with every page flip, and just had me feeling all sorts of happiness throughout it. Also, this book tone-wise reminds me of the song Dynamite by BTS. Like, if you've ever listened to Dynamite by BTS and you just felt like that overwhelming feeling of happiness, that's what I felt while reading this book, an overwhelming feeling of happiness. That song brings on all the happy feels, and this book brought on all the happy feels. They're two peas in a pod. It's got that small town vibe going for it, and we follow our main character, who is not going to let it hold her back. Like, living in a small town, she's like, not gonna let it hold her back from achieving all that she wants to achieve in life. And it's also one of those situations where it's like, she's not gonna let herself kind of stay in the mold that this small town wants her to, like, maintain. Like, she's not gonna try to fit the mold to be like every Everybody else and fit in. Like, she's just gonna be herself. And she's gonna own it. She's gonna break out of the norm. And we love to see it. It tackles a lot of topics in a short amount of time, but it makes sure to do justice with everything that it talks about. And it has a plot that will have you begging for more as the story progresses. And will also have you avoiding reaching the end because you don't want it to end ever. And the final book on my list is All the Things We Never Knew. This story follows Carly and Rex who have fallen in love on the basketball course. Together they try to make that romance nothing but net. 
But as we begin to explore their characters and we get to see reveals as to the things they are facing in their own lives, we begin to see it's harder for them to maintain the relationship with everything going on in their personal lives. I'll be honest, I was a bit hesitant in including this book in this list just because I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars. I didn't give it the full 5 out of 5 stars. And I'm also hesitant in recommending it because I feel like this book is often misunderstood. The reason I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars is because of the romance, because it is insta-love. Like, they literally, like, lock eyes on the court and the next thing you know, they're in love. And the reason I'm hesitant in even recommending it is because I feel like people will see the insta-love and just paint this book as that one thing. And I'll be over here hecka annoyed because the story itself explores so much. And if all you got out of this book is insta-love, then you need to reread it. There are three main things that I loved seeing be explored in this one. The first one is how our main guy is a major softy. He says bye to toxic masculinity, is super vulnerable with his emotions, and just is emotional throughout the book. Like, isn't afraid to cry, isn't afraid to feel his feelings. It was honestly kind of shocking reading about a character who's kind of more of a jock type. Be emotional and be open to feeling the way that he feels, just because it's not a typical thing that we see with the jock type character. Like, with the jock type character, we often see tough guy, bad guy, bully. And it was just such a nice shift to see a character who is involved in athletics to kind of be more on the soft side. And I feel like we need more of that. I love the journey that we went on with Carly as well. She's kind of trying to figure out how to chase what she wants in life. She's always been good at basketball. That's her thing. And the people around her kind of cornered her into that being her thing. Not on purpose. They were just like, oh, you're good at that thing. That's what you're going to do with your life, right? Of course you are. And we see her just like questioning her future and what she really wants in life and trying to figure out how she is going to be able to chase after what she really wants. And the last aspect that I really liked is the family aspect. Both Carly and Rex have really difficult family situations. They both come from rather broken families. And just seeing how Carly and Rex work so hard to kind of be the glue to hold their families together made for an interesting element within the book. So again, hesitant in recommending this because I feel like people will paint it for one thing, but I did love it. It was a great book. Give it a shot if it sounds interesting to you. All right, guys, so those were five books that I ended up loving in the year of 2020. I really wish that I had ended up loving a lot more of the books that I read this year, but it just didn't end up happening, and that's okay. I'm hoping to read a lot of great books in 2021, and I just feel like it's gonna be a great reading year as a whole. I'm feeling pretty optimistic about it, and I honestly just can't wait for a new year, a fresh start. I'm ready for it. You guys should let me know down below in the comments some of the books that you ended up loving in the year of 2020. What were some of your favorites? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon, and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires, and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye! -oh. The first- whoa, ouch. <laughs> ouch. That kind of hurt. I think I got a paper cut.